Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another episode. In this episode, we are going to take a look at six different blog posts. And there is a little something for everyone in this episode because we're going to talk about original art. We're going to talk about Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and a lot more. Before we start to talk about these blog posts, I want to give you a reminder of the new podcast that was launched by Go Collect a couple of weeks ago, and it's called Behind the Blog. And in this podcast, I sit down and have some in-depth conversations with your favorite bloggers. And so if you are interested in hearing a little bit more from these folks, you definitely want to check out Behind the Blog on Apple and Spotify. We're going to start off in this first blog post by taking a look at some original art, specifically some Dick Tracy associated artwork. What's really cool about this first blog post is that the blogger actually gives us seven different rules that we should follow if we are planning to invest in original art. And this is something that I alluded to in last week's episode, that there is some magic to be made with original art, but there is definitely a learning curve associated with it. What's also fantastic is that they give us a real world example of how they have applied some of these principles recently to some original art that they picked up associated with Dick Tracy. So not only is it its theory, but it's also practical application as well. And so if you are interested in original art, this is a blog post that you want to check out. The link down in the description. So not that long ago, Disney acquired the rights to Aliens and Predator from Fox. And shortly after that, Marvel acquired the publishing rights from IDW to both Aliens and Predator. And over the last couple of weeks, we've actually started to see how Marvel is going to start using these two new intellectual properties that they've picked up. They, they are coming out with a series of variant covers, and there was also a Predator Omnibus that was announced recently. Our next blogger actually takes a hard look at what is actually happening with some of the comics that are associated with Predator. And the blogger does a really solid job of identifying a couple of books that you may want to check out if you believe that there is maybe a reboot that is going to be coming for the Predator franchise as a result of these moves by Disney and also by Marvel. The first book that the blogger talks about is Predator issue number one. At a 9.8, this issue is doing incredibly well. Over the last three months, the sales have essentially averaged north of $575. And in fact, in October, there was a record high sale for a 9.8 at $726. Now what's really fascinating is that for the last three years, there were no sales above $355 for a 9.8. So this book is definitely on fire. If you happen to have a raw copy in your collection, you might want to take a hard look at it to see if this book has a chance at a 9.8. And again, this is a really great book, really great franchise that has a lot of potential associated with it. And these are some of the things that the blogger actually talks about in this blog post, along with a few other Predator related books that you may want to read about. The link to this blog post is down in the description. So everyone knows that movies and TV shows make for fantastic speculation especially when it comes to comic books. But our next blogger is asking the question of whether 
lightning will strike when it comes to original art. The blogger specifically takes a look at what is happening with the Black Lightning franchise, if you will. And they talk a little bit about how this TV show has actually done some really fantastic things for the comics and kind of ask the question of whether we can expect some big things from original art associated with Black Lightning as well. Before we talk about the original art, let's first take a look at how the comic has been performing as a result of the CW TV show. Black Lightning issue number one from 1977 is performing incredibly well. At present, a 9.8 is selling for north of $500 for the last four sales. When you take a look at a 9.6, the book is also performing pretty well there as well. A 9.6 goes for roughly $200, and that's against an FMV from Go Collect of $190. The blogger goes on to talk about a few other Black Lightning comics that are performing well, again, based upon what is actually happening with the CW. And as I alluded to, they asked the question as to whether we are going to see some good performance associated with the original art. And I don't want to spoil it for you because I do want you to check out this blog post. Uh, but let's just say that not all boats are being lifted as a result of the show. This next blog post asks a provocative question as to who the next Harley Quinn will be. Everybody knows that Batman Adventures issue number 12, the first comic book appearance of Harley Quinn, is performing incredibly well. This book is on fire. And our blogger is essentially asking the question of who is going to be the next Harley Quinn. The blogger, for his part, takes a hard look at two possible characters that could catch fire. The first character that they talk about is Jessica Cruz. And Jessica is on fire because of the Green Lantern show that is expected to come out on HBO Max. She is one of several different Green Landers that is expected to appear. And as a result of that, her books are starting to catch fire. Mike, the blogger, actually talks about one specific book that you may want to check out, and that book is Justice League issue number 31. As of late, this book has skyrocketed. At a 9.8, it is selling for roughly $300, again, propelled by all of the excitement around the upcoming show. The blogger goes on to talk about the second character, and it is a female character, and some of you have potentially already guessed who this hot character could be. And for those that don't have a guess, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know that it is none other than Joker's new sidekick, that being Punchline. And this is a character that has honestly taken DC fandom by storm. Many people expected this character to be nothing more than a replacement for Harley Quinn, but it, she's proving to be a lot more than that, uh, more than just a love interest of the Joker. I mean, she's an incredible character. And because of that, there is a lot of excitement around this character as well as the books that are associated with her, specifically her cameo appearance as well as her first full appearance. The cameo appearance is Batman issue number 89, and this book is performing pretty well. It is holding its value currently at around $150 for a 9.8 graded copy. Her first full appearance in Year of the Villain, Hell Risen issue number three is also performing incredibly well and holding its value sitting at roughly $220 for a 9.8. Mike actually asks in this blog post a pretty provocative question. And his question is whether either one or both of these characters have the potential to reach the heights 
of Harley Quinn. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I actually have a new podcast with Go Collect behind the blog. And if you are curious what Mike's thoughts actually are, you may want to tune in to this week's episode of the podcast when he and I talk about this blog post in detail. So our next blogger actually ran into a little bit of a problem a few years ago. They specifically sent in a couple of books into CBCS and things did not go as well as they should have gone. But the blogger didn't give up. He actually tried CBCS again recently as a result of a lot of the news that is out there around the new case that CBCS has. And I was lucky enough to actually be one of the very first YouTubers and first people out there to actually experience this case firsthand. But the blogger does a really good job of talking about and contrasting his most recent experience with CBCS versus what he experienced a few years ago. And let's just say that it is a dramatic improvement. I think the blogger really liked the customer service, liked the improved case, liked the improved turnaround time. And the blogger actually gave CBCS a score, an overall score of a B plus because of this positive experience. And I'm not gonna go into all of the details, but I would encourage you to check out this blog post if you are trying to decide whether you wanna go with CBCS or one of the other grading companies, this is a good blog post to read so that you can vicariously you know, experience what it's like to actually send a couple of books in to this grading company. The link to this blog post is down in the description. Give it a read. So I'll tell you, I am not a huge Turtles fan, to be honest. Unlike my younger brother, who was a big uh, Turtles fan back in the day. And I know a lot of the Turtle fans out there are now groaning at their phones and their TV screens and things like that. But what I will tell you is that I did read The Last Ronin. Bought it, I read it, I enjoyed it. And I also enjoyed this next blog post, which takes a look at the last Ronin. And the blogger does a really good job of talking about what has essentially happened with the last Ronin. They talk about the, the print production issues that were experienced, but then they also highlight several of the books that are associated with last Ronin, several of the variants, in fact, that you may want to consider picking up. Because again, this was a really good story that was 30 years in the making and I think it has it has reignited maybe the fire of a lot of Turtles fans and maybe even pulled in some new fans and possibly even some speculators that weren't looking at the Turtles before. And so if you believe that there is a future for this franchise, and I do believe that there is a future ahead because of this book, you may want to check out this blog post and read about the different variants that are out there as well as the expectation for what the future may hold. The link to this blog post is down in the description. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another episode. And as I promised, there was a little something for everyone in this episode. If you enjoyed it, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind. And if you want more fun, tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.